So now we've explored the general technique of texture splitting. Let's see how we can turn this example material into something a bit more practical and more like something you would use in a real world project. So far, we've been compositing this pattern together and previewing it as a solid flat color. In reality, this is acting as a mask, which is just a grayscale value that we can use to drive other material attributes. I'm going to bring in another texture sample node. And just as an example, I'm going to search for the cobblestone rough texture that comes as part of the starter content, because it will serve as a simple base for which to place our puddles on top of. We want the one with the underscore D suffix for diffuse. We'll also want the normal texture with the underscore N suffix for normal that goes with it. So duplicate the texture sample node and select that one too. Then I'll connect up the diffuse color to the base color slot of the main material and the normal to the normal slot. Now I'm gonna go back to the preview window and change back to a perspective view and lit mode so that we can see how the lighting is working. I don't want this color multiply anymore, so I'll just select and delete these. Now, before we use this mask, I've noticed that the texture looks a bit gray in the preview. And if we start previewing the node, then it does look a bit washed out, which means that the values in the texture are not going all the way up to one, which is what we want if we want to use this as a mask for any kind of interpolating. To remedy that, I'll create a multiply node with the M key and set the default multiply value up to eight which if we have a look, should push most of the non-zero values above one. Then we should create a clamp node to make sure that all the values get clamped at one. And now we can use this as a mask. To illustrate this, I'm going to modify our material so that in areas where our splat mask is white, we want the normals to be completely flat and not bumpy like in the normal texture. To create normals that are flat, we want to set the normal in tangent space to be a normal that sticks up directly from the triangle face of the mesh. This will make the mesh go back to appearing flat. The normal that does this is 0, 0, 1. So create a 3D vector constant node by holding 3 and clicking down. Then set the B component, which is really the Z component, to 1. Then we can interpolate between the original normal value and the constant normal and we'll use our mask as the blend value to effectively choose between them. If we plug that into the normal slot of the material, we can take a look at the preview window. And in this lighting, it's not immediately obvious, but if we rotate the view around so that we can see the highlights, we can start to see areas where the splatting is making the surface appear flat and areas where there is no splatting look bumpy due to the original normal texture. To make it more obvious, I'm going to darken the diffuse color in those areas by creating a multiply node. Set the multiply to mock down to 0.66. And then we'll use a lerp to blend between the standard texture and the darkened one by again using the mask as the blend factor. Plug it in. And maybe we can go down to 0.5. If we zoom out, because those highlights are not showing us the darkening, we can see the darker areas where the splats are. Another thing we can try is to get the mask and plug it directly into the specular slot of the material. Here we can see the splat areas have high specular value and the rest have no specular value. But what we probably really want to do to make these splat areas look like puddles is to use the mask to control the roughness. We want the puddle areas to have no roughness so that they reflect clearly. Our current mask will make the puddle areas fully rough though, because its value is one in those areas. So we can invert a zero to one mask by using a one minus node. This performs an operation which takes one and subtracts the value that you give it, which makes values that were one turn to zero and values that were zero turn to one. So plug it into the roughness and we can see the puddle areas are now fully reflective and the non-puddle areas are rough and don't reflect as much. I'll hit apply and go back to the main viewport and see how this looks in our test level. As you can see, we're starting to get something that looks like 
a lot of puddles all over the floor. To make these reflections a bit cooler to look at and not just have them reflect a blue sky, I'll drag in some static mesh assets from the starter content. If we place them around and then go full screen and move around a bit, then it's starting to look a bit more interesting. In the next lesson, we're going to put together a really simple water ripple effect on these puddles.